so today I wanted to, to make an announcement, but before I make that announcement, I'm going to build the intrigue a little bit more. Uh, just to tell you how gratified I have been by the number of people that have called me. Just, I think the main reason is they're trying to pump me for information. They want to know what I'm going to do. But some of them uh, have been a little bit over the top. Okay, I'll admit that. Some have said, what? Governor? Attorney General? Like, you know, be a lawyer, be Attorney General. And, no, you don't. Just okay. learn it in the law. I knew Mark Johnson would know that, that you don't have to be. But I said, thank you. I am very gratified that you even think that I, that I would have uh, that kind of credibility, but no, that, that's not it. Uh, but I am consider I have been considering for some time um, this decision that I'm going to announce today. The, probably the most gratifying comment I've gotten when people have reached out to me is to say that we don't want to lose you in the legislature. Just got a call from someone yesterday who works within the charter school movement. And he said, you know, we, we just don't want to lose you. Uh, one, we know that you've been a great advocate for charter schools, but the, the main thing is that you've been a fighter sometimes when um, the traditional public school people want to come against charter schools. You have fought for our interests. And, and who are we going to find to be that fighter? Uh, Jerry Cox is here with the Family Council, and I've been very proud to have carried, uh, I think he would probably concur that I have carried every single major piece of homeschool legislation right. true. since I was first elected in 2012. True. Um, and that started with the Tim Tebow legislation, if you're familiar, where homeschool students can participate in extracurricular activities at their local public school. That is now expanded to where students can actually participate in their local private school as well, and there have been other uh, progressive changes. So when I got this call, these calls about, uh, gosh, we don't want to lose you as a legislator, and I, and I so appreciated it, but one of the things that I did was to go back and look at the legislation that I was fortunate enough to be lead sponsor on and to, to be in the middle of the fight. And, uh, you know, I'm in my fifth term. Uh, after a while, it, it doesn't just take getting old and gray-headed like me to be forgetful. Uh, over 10 years, or nine years at this point, you really forget the battles that you fought, even if they have been very intense, intense battles. But I went back and I, did, I just did a quick re review of some of the legislation that I've been most proud of. Uh, I, I was certainly proud that the governor tapped me several terms back to be the lead sponsor for the productivity funding model for higher ed to make sure that they're not just being able to raise money based on enrollment, students in seats, but actually being productive and them being able to receive degrees or certificates. So I was very proud of that, as proud of the cap uh, that we placed on school districts. Uh, you know, we found, I found, and no one had ever asked these questions of how much they were socking away in bank accounts rather than spending it right. on student performance. One, at the time we ran the legislation, it was $1.6 billion that local school districts have mm -hmm. in the bank. We placed a cap on it. Now, unfortunately, uh, superintendents have figured out how figured out how to do the workaround. And that that really leads to a lot of the battleground that I've been involved in many times of butting heads with superintendents as they figure out ways to circumvent what the legislature is doing to make sure that students are reading at grade level better than a 30% level in the state, which is just, um, it's educational malpractice that our students are reading below grade level that badly, especially when school districts have the resources. Some school districts had enough money they could have hired an individual tutor for every one of these children that are reading below grade level. Mm -hmm. But they would rather pat themselves on the back and tell the school board, hey, we've socked away some more money. Um, that, th that piece of legislation was important. As I mentioned, all the homeschool legislation. 
the legislation that I that I sponsored this time, I was not successful in getting it passed, but banning critical race theory from being taught in our schools. And we've all acknowledged that maybe we were 60 days ahead of the curve on that because now states all across the country are actually banning it. And I think you'll see that we're still going to make some some inroads. I was quoted in uh, a, a Time Magazine article just came out in the last several days um, of saying that even though we were successful in our, uh, unsuccessful in Arkansas on banning critical race theory, I think the one thing we were successful in is making parents aware that it is going on in their school districts. And we, some of us just received a notice today that um, one of the curriculum pieces, one of the curriculum guides that is being used at this year's Arkansas Governor School is about white privilege and identifying students as having white privilege if they have, you know, certain attributes, which might be that they have two parents at home, or that their family owns a home, or they own more than one car. I mean, those things aren't uh, distinct to a class of people. We, we are creating more division within our schools. But of all the legislation that I have proudly uh, put through in the legislature, I think the piece of legislation that, that I really am most proud of has been bringing to Arkansas our voter ID law. 